there's a lot of thoughtful books in this lot and this whole line, but this might be the top. Making the X-Men metaphor work in much more nuanced ways than it usually does. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in X, presented by Crushing Comics. We're here to talk about New Mutants 18. It was out on the 26th of May, 2021, and we're going to get into a lot of details of this very detailed issue. So expect spoilers, expect discussions of other X books. You have been warned. For New Mutants 18, we're going to give our initial reactions and look, resist the urge to overanalyze. There is a lot to discuss in this issue. Just react. Tyler. <laughs> I, mean, I, I enjoyed that Ayala is actually addressing all the issues that we brought up when we discussed the past couple of issues. So that is good. Um, Reese is firing on all cylinders, I think, in this issue as well. So I really like this book. 4.5, cross out words, out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, react! I do not have a ton of experience with karma, so I did not have as much of an emotional hook with this story. I am sorry that said, I really think the craft in this book is excellent. It's still going a little slower than I'd like, but I consider it very pleasant and thought provoking. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Faria, hmm. react. Uh, no, I mean, I am a sucker for this kind of new mutant story because new mutants, I feel like is historically has been stories of like multiple things that were happening. And then you kind of come back to each of the different things and the characters are so nice and so good compared to the other characters we're not going to talk about. <laughs> and it's, it's just all about emotion. It's all about like, you know, like ground level, what's going on. Um, I was extremely pleased that during one of the crucible scene, I recognized every single one of them. I'm like, I have arrived. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would give it a 4.25 um, misspelled words, words out of five. <laughs> I think that this book is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I, All right. There's a couple of little things that we'll get into. But um, if you're looking for somebody who knows how to make a great X-Men comic, Vita Ayala and Rod Rice have proven that they do. And I think if you're a fan of uh, Chris Claremont and Bill Sinkovich's New Mutants in the 20s and 30s, and if you haven't read any, any Hox Pox at all, you could just pick this up and love it. Masterpiece. Uh, I want to start with the main theme because this theme is pervasive across the whole book. And I, I want to start it out with Freya and we'll go around the clock. So Freya, it's coming to you first. The main theme is how has a lack of death changed the rules of society when it comes with what society will tolerate? Society seems to tolerate suffering because it's not death. And if it leads to death, then you get to die, right? Um, should people have autonomy over their own bodies? The answer seems to be no, because if you die, you will. But what happens until you die? The entire issue presents this argument from multiple sides of what happens when you cannot control your own body to make it match your self-image versus this rush that you get of self-actualization when you can control your body to get what you want from your self-image. We see it in many different ways with, with Karma going through the Crucible, with Scout's argument with Cosmar and Anil. Um, There's many different versions of this. So I just want to talk about how do you think death is really affecting um, people's ability to have autonomy over themselves. And is that different than it is in the real world because of this artificial or lack of artificial restriction of, of death, Faria? So it's not the lack of death that is the problem to me. It's the lack of structure, lack of support, lack of understanding of how these things should happen or like and how to raise a nation or how to raise a group of children, you know, pretty much. Because I feel like if the whole crucible thing, it's one thing to kind of put two sort of like, you know, sort of like people who know how to fight to put it in there so they can fight it out and they can get to whatever they need to do in terms of, you know, what they want to achieve versus it's another thing when you're putting people who can't necessarily fight for themselves and that's the only way they can achieve what they want to achieve. Like, yeah. but it, there shouldn't be, it shouldn't be this way. And I think it's not necessarily the lack of debt that I blame is the lack of education, lack of structure, lack of infrastructure, lack of program that I, I'm blaming. And the thing is like, I, we have seen like so many different uh, 
like like different mutants throughout this book has been suffering because of it in very individual ways and i am here for it Mm. Like in, in just not necessarily here to watch them suffer, but here to watch how this theme gets explored, how this kind of, and the thing is, I've said it again and again, death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. This is what it is. Like, you know, not being right. able to be in control mm. of your body, yeah. not being able to be the person you see yourself as, or, you know, be the person like whether physically or emotionally, it, it, it's this, this turmoil of like, you know, that that is like it's tearing mutants like new young, new mutants or younger mutants apart so what is there to even fight more for to, to fight for like what what is she what is she fighting for then let's go to tyler next tyler what do you think about this relationship between death and and bodily autonomy and and self actualization here when, when when you mention death and then bodily um you know self actualization <laughs> I thought of the movie Death Becomes Her. <laughs> where uh, you a camp classic. I know. Yeah. And, and they're immortal, but the yeah. body doesn't stay, like, you know, harm-proof. So it kind of tracks in, in, in certain ways here. Um, but, I mean, I, I feel like we have spent quite a bit of time talking about this, so I, I'm not going to go through everything. Um, I just want to bring up something in here where when it was mentioned that Krakoa is, you know, when I think um, um, uh, Kama was telling Tran that, oh, Krakoa is second chance, you know, and blah, blah, blah. So if that's the case, why should it only be for some members? Mm. It's America! (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that really ties into something that Spurrier has Dr. Nemesis talk about in the first issue of Way of X, which is that when... It's, it's the hegemony of the powerful, right? It's it's for powerful members. It's for members who are trained in battle. It's for members mm-hmm. who do conflict. And I mean, before I hand it over to Harry, there's two really interesting shades that, although they're part of the plot that we'll get into, it's impossible to separate from this theme, which is that um, karma gets to enter the crucible on the behalf of her brother who doesn't have a body. So does that mean he doesn't have a power? And he like, well, how is that different than Cosmar or, or No Girl, right? And then karma comes out of the crucible to many fans notice because we've had this question all along still with her um mechanical cyborg whatever you want to call it leg yeah uh which she didn't have to but clearly that's part of how she sees herself and she maintained it rather than changed it Mm -hmm. so that but but she had the privilege to make that discussion that decision for herself because she had the privilege to be in the crucible because she has the privilege even though she's not seen as a combatant of being in this upper crust of warrior class inhabitants of Krakoa. so is it because she already paid her dues for the mutants all this time so now therefore she's considered to be one of the better like better tool as Magneto mm. would have called her, called his citizens to. Well, I mean, part of it, I think, uh, okay, part of my explanation as to why uh, Kama came back with her leg, her prosthetic leg, is because this is not about Kama. This is about Tran. Oh, such a good take. So, yeah, so Kama doesn't get a choice. Yeah, she is doing it on behalf of Tran um, because Tran is, you know, not there. To, there's no physical body so so she is you know fighting on behalf of Tran and her resurrection is just a byproduct of the whole crucible thing as the receipt lady for post 2000 newly a newly <laughs> Your new title yeah my new title as the receipt lady post 2000 you made it. I also saw it as a like they're not going to let her come back because she lost like with both legs because she lost the leg fighting mutant haters like you know fighting like the uh it was um oh my god what's their name uh those guys the those Jairich, well, ho- ho- Jairich, hodge stabs in the leg hodge. in his giant exactly. spider body yeah exactly <laughs> so the thing is like because it's like the in service of mutant like you know it was like it's a symbol and the whole point of mm. the, like, they're trying to create like that whole war mentality like you know we fought and we survived there like even if it was about her like I completely agree with like Tyler's point of view that it wasn't about her even if it was about her they wouldn't let her come back with it because she lost that leg in service of mutants before and that needs to be a symbol Mm. and 
the thing is, like, it kind of looks like this. <laughs> well, I want to take this one level deeper. And if Harry wants to jump in after this, please do, because you haven't had a chance to mm -hmm. talk yet. Um, when I'm talking about this actualization and what's missing, there's, the mutants have a lot of tools at their disposal to help people realize what they want to be as themselves, visually, psychically, right? And, and they're giving all of this intervention to karma in order that leads her to this crucible. But then we have this group of new mutants, you know, Cosmar, who, who looks like a crazy stuffed animal, Anil, who's a lizard, Mar no girl who has no body, Rain Boy, whose body is, is not entirely, you know, uh, tangible all liquid. the time. It's liquid, <laughs> yeah. And like all of these people are like, well, we don't have bodies. Like Tran, <laughs> Tran is psychic and in your brain, like we, how is that any different than us? But they're basically being told, well, you don't qualify for death yet. So just keep having your problem until you qualify for yeah. death. That's that's a very interesting standard that's been set up on Krakoa. When you have the tools to let somebody live the life that they want to be living and you're withholding it for an ultimately arbitrary reason. I don't know, yeah. any, anybody else, you don't have to respond to that, but that's just really what I got from this issue as a whole. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the whole point when um, well, I, I, you know, when um, they they resurrected Malice because she doesn't have a body. Um, and, you know, I was like, what happened to No Girl? No Girl, you know, as um, Cosma point out, pointed out, like, you know, she didn't have a body, not because not from her own actions. Like her body was like basically, re I mean, she was kind of kill in a sense. Yeah. Well, so, once again, Malice, part of this combatant class of mutants, right? Who's always been at war. And it's like, if you haven't put, like you've led the kids down this path to the point of magic letter. Maybe we should talk about that first. Like, yeah. why are you restricting them from things that they should receive that the rest of us are receiving just because you didn't bring them up right? So let's go, let's yeah. go right into that let's magic go. letter, right? Very, yeah. So magic's yeah. letter is, she basically says, I learned it by watching you. She <laughs> says, these people aren't soldiers or an army. They're supposed to be citizens in a new nation that has already a pretty well-developed Defense Force, issuing a specific continuation of the thoughts begun by North Star in X Factor 9. I mean, I, I, it's the I, best. Think, I think I wrote it. Right? I think you did write it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ghost wrote it. <laughs> this is the most pointed, aggressive, like I... most valid piece of writing about this entire like structure Xavier has put into place. Where it's just like, yeah, where is the school? What are we doing? There is no structure here. And in lack of that, in a society that's prioritizing death and, and like rewarding change because of death, kids are going to start experimenting and finding other ways to get what they want. And it's exactly. like, it's just, Perfect. it's this interesting, it's like Freya said, just the lack of structure mixed with the the um, the weird kind of like prioritization of certain people that's creating these, you know, these, these things that feel transgressive and might be, but like, it's definitely like what would happen if you got nothing but time on your hands and creativity and superpowers. And it's just a, and back to the main point, this is just a great page. This is like a great, just body blow to Xavier, who's just looking worse and worse with each friggin' issue we've covered lately. Like in the beginning, it was like, ah, you know, maybe he's good, maybe yeah, he's maybe. bad, who can say really? Now it's like pretty damn no, sure he's got there's, a there is no There's no maybe with Xavier after yeah. Rebecca did his work on him. Uh, oh, that was, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty That undeniable. was pointed and that was, that was good. Uh, yeah. But yeah. the thing is like, you know, <laughs> But I do say that. And the thing is like, yeah, I learned this from doing you. Like what we learned this from watching you. And I'm so glad that it came from magic because mm -hmm. it's like the, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I would have accept, expected her to write that letter. Like even though with all the, she, we learned in X of Swords that she's not good with word spelling. Mm -hmm. And this is it kind of, that streak kind of continues here. And then she is just like, just writing this scathing letters. And that actually got me also thinking about all the other senior mutants that Xavier brought up. And I think this is the whole point of generations of like, you know, gap. It's like boomers, which are like Cyclops, Jean Grey, Storm. Those are like boomer mutant versus mm -hmm. Gen X mutant or like a new, <laughs> new, like new mutant, like true new mutant who are seeing things completely differently. And I was just like the, whole thing of like who gets like you know why these these kids are not being because first of all they're kids so they're like oh you're kid and you also unfortunately have somewhat useless powers that doesn't help 
defend like you know with anything so we're not going to help you and then it's kind of also proves out that you know a lot of the time children of you know various like in you know, are pretty much uh, depending on their parents to make the decision for them and you know this is this is like but however as soon as they turn 18 we can send them to war no problem <laughs> so it just it's like a lot of that is just coming to play but even though they're supposed to be better they're supposed to be different and here we are we are not well, well also, we are. I love that you point out that generational divide. I mean, in the books, they're not supposed to be that much older than each other. We know that's yeah. a sliding timescale thing. Right. But you really no could sense. look as like the original X-Men as, as the ones who are like, if you go to college, you'll get a job. So go to college. And then <laughs> and then like the New Mutants who were all like teenagers in, in, you know, in the 80s who are kind of like the, the Gen X are like, okay, we went to college. It kind of worked for us, but like we didn't get all the happiness you promised. And then the next one down is like the millennials. And they're like, we're still trying to just pay for college. And it's like, it, it really does kind of map until you get to the that's generation a great read. that's like looking that. upward at all the other generations being like this is all just bullshit none of it works at all <laughs> and, you, there's and, no math you're not even trying to take care of us everything's more expensive than we can afford and there's no way to be happy thank you so much and that's that actually is a shocking indictment to other like you know to the um the mutants that are always in the movies and are supposed to be like you know we're supposed to love and care about are, they were given chances to be in the council and then they just leave the councils because it's not comf- we're not comfortable here yeah Versus, I don't kind of, we would rather just have the an x-men team screw trying yeah, to be ju- sovereign rulers <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna like, do uh, this over here. But well, the thing is, like, if you don't step up and then do it, guess who's gonna make your but, decision but, but, for you? But Sinister. Do, do remember <laughs> that that it wasn't it wasn't Jean saying I quit. It was like, well, if you leave and do this thing. You you have to quit the council. True. Yeah, she was like, I think I have to do this thing for the good yeah. of the island. And they're like, Well, yeah. if you walk out that door, yeah, yeah, and then then don't go. Then don't find another way. It's Do almost like you can make more ch- it It's like you can do better <laughs> as an actual, like in politics and actually part of like the power making levers rather than punching an alien on other world. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. like you're yeah. Why throw one more the, layer? Go ahead, Priya. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the thing. No, here's the thing. You are different now. Do not think like a hero. You are a politician. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to think like that. Jeez, so that's you have to great. Like, you know. Oh. Like, yeah, oh, but, but you okay. know that so, you know that Jean cannot be a politician because you have read X Men Red. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so focusing okay. still on the letter, the other thing okay. I seem to be at the perfect pace in my my household read. To, I, Hickman must have read all this stuff like two years before me because all of the things are coming to roost as I read the issues. Literally <laughs> two days ago, the day this came out. I read New Mutant 73, which is when Ileana returns from the original old Ileana back to kid Ileana. And a lot of points are made in that issue, strikingly using Rain, who has a big role to play here, that just because Ileana went through this six years of horrible abuse in in Inferno to make this confident current warrior, it doesn't mean she deserved that. And doesn't mean given the chance that we should make her have to live that life. This is in one of the first resurrections in a way. They basically let the current dark child be killed so that this the seven-year-old dark child can live again and and experience life the way she ought to so whether there's a lot of complications as to what this magic is and what she remembers and what she doesn't have that i'm sure free remembers best better than the rest of us because she's read it recently but like that's why it really hit for me the magic to be the one to write this letter she's like not only did you put me through x-men training but one version of me grew up in literal hell and i'm telling you that this is not the way to, to, to go about creating um well-adjusted human beings who have access to happiness. Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the other other aspect of that is like the way magic is looking at it because of all the suffering that she has gone and she's trying to do something better for right. like, you know, fellow young mutant. Honey badger or scout. I sure. Scout. Honey badger. Honey badger. Thing. Yeah. Honey badger is also bringing up pretty much the same point mm-hmm. that I have gone through all of this. I know, even though, I mean, is she the best person to talk and about? She- That's different. But it's a she, there's like that aspect of there too. Like these are two people who have gone through things against their will, which are the only thing they pretty much knew for the longest time. They had to unlearn it, become different per- people. And now they're trying to help younger babies. Let's, let's jump right to that scout discussion. I think we can come back and pick up things from the crucible yeah. because... It is a loaded discussion. Nobody's right or wrong. It's a lot of shades of no, gray. It's, 
really good in that way. It's like a very finely tuned debate. It is. I mean, Scout is actually the is is really the standout character here um, mm-hmm. in Ayala's run, I think, because she's very sensitive to how everyone's feeling, even though she herself is feeling lost. She's like, oh, you know, I can't I can't go talk to Laura. She she's dealing with her own stuff. Um, you know, yeah. that's why hypothetically I'm coming to you. And she knows how to suck up to like big boys. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I just want to give like Scout a big hug and tell her like everything is okay, you know, even though it's not. Oh. But um, and that's how much Ayala's writing has has um made me care for you know um Scout, Honey Badger, even though Tom Taylor did like a great job, great great job um, introducing her and developing the relationship between um, Laura and her. But here, I, I mean, I think Honey Badger is um, developing into a really sensitive, a really fully, you know, uh, I mean, it's just an advancement of a character from that run. It's like her, she's becoming her own person. Mm. Like it's not connected to Laura anymore. She's no. becoming her own person. Yes. But can we talk about Big Brother Proud Star? Like, <laughs> like mm. I mean, oh, the, the, I it, I actually kind of there's there's twice I cried. Uh, one was when he's like, follow your instinct, hypothetically, you know, and she's like, oh really? Like I mean, she was like ready to. She was so shocked, and I love it when like adults are trusting the kids guts and they're telling the kids to trust your instinct and it was just like i don't know i mean it it really brought tears to my eyes it's like a it's such like a form of respect just saying like i see you fully and i'm gonna say Mm -hmm. that you whatever you think is best will be okay well there's also this parenting thing i mean it's also probably a management thing too but specifically parents (laughs) don't mock the behavior you're encouraging like if you're trying to get your kid to come to breakfast on time out take it in their day clothes rather than their pjs if they do that even if it took them five minutes extra don't be like look who came to breakfast all dressed up because like Mm -hmm. you're you're Mm. penalizing them for the behavior you've been encouraging right and it's hard because we're sarcastic funny people we want to make the kind of comments we see in media and that's (laughs) the way that people talk to each other in media but like if you say that to a kid then the kid's like well great i'm damned if i do damned if i do i tried to do this hard thing and somebody kind of batted me away for doing the thing that that was hard for me here even it's funny because proud stars being ministered to by danny to be like get in touch with your feelings but he has this kind of perfect moment of parenting where he's like, I hear you, you're valid. It's totally okay that you came to me with this question, even if you're going to say it's hypothetical when we all know that it's not. And you've got to just trust yourself. I can't give you an answer. I'm like, man, I feel like I, if I parent as well this week as we're parenting here, I'm having a good week. <laughs> um, and then not only that, he also offered his help. He's like, do you need help? You don't have to take the help. Yeah, but it's but here. Do, yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's here. And then it's like Jimmy, and I'm like, it's so Jimmy! wholesome. <laughs> it's such a wholesome it's so little good. scene. Yeah, no, I mean it's good. And and okay, I mean it's also good because Reese drew the expression mm-hmm. body language perfectly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just Reese look at the way the, the way Scott was like, oh, what me no. I, I said this was <laughs> hypothetically. I was like, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, we've I, criticized race for not going hard enough on the faces in the previous some issues occasionally, but when somebody's in the foreground having emotions here, he really renders it. There was another book out this week, it's not a Marvel book, that was all about smiles, the whole theme of the book was smiles, and the artist wasn't even doing the features on the faces. I'm like, how do you do that disservice to your writer who's written this amazing script about smiles and not draw the smiles right? But like, <laughs> Reese like really leans into this. There's one thing that gets said in that advice seeking conversation that I really think crystallizes a lot of the things in this book thematically. Just because we all want this to work doesn't mean we close our eyes to what got us here, which I think is like the same thing of magic writing the letter. She's like, okay, mm-hmm. you made some people who are self-sufficient. Let's not say that just because we've succeeded in the past that we're beyond criticism. So we have like some of these adult characters who like have gone through this actualization has have been, I mean, if you look at magic and Warpath, these are characters who've been through some stuff, some angst, some, some, you know, Warpath was a villain for a while, but they've kind of like come through it and, and they actually have the power to coach these kids. But now let's take it to scout scene with the other kids when she finally does come to confront them. Uh, There's, 
really interesting arguments on both sides. And it's kind of like nobody, it's one of these things where nobody has the lived experience of anybody else. And you can all be going through tough things, but it doesn't yes. mean your tough answer is the tough answer for someone else. Scout says, people didn't leave their bodies behind in, in the boneyard body garden for others to use them as shells. Because as a clone, she is really attuned to this idea that having a body that you can call your own matters. It's a right. And she never was given that right. She was never given the opportunity. She's in a Lara body, effectively. And she's having to decide how to be herself, knowing that she can almost look at Lara and say, oh, look, here's what my body is going to look like in X number of years, because that's, I'm the same body. So, so Scout is really approaching this from the sense of like, it matters that you're unique. I wish I could be unique in some ways, but I'm living with it. Then on the other side, you have Cosmar and also Anil, who are arguing that people yeah. who are comfortable in their own bodies have no right to dictate how others should want to feel about changing or escaping theirs because they have bodily mutations. They didn't have agency over those mutations and they see having a unique body as a curse rather than a blessing. They would rather have a body that's rubber stamped or a clone or anything to get away. Neither of these people are wrong. They have both surmounted incredible difficulty, but the solutions they're each looking for run counter to what the other one has or wants. It's, it's so beautifully nuanced and just, you know, the one side just being like, you know, wanting to change their bodies and not being allowed to by the society. That's like hardly even subtext. That's just pretty it's much text. on the page. Yeah. It's just text <laughs> at this point. Yeah. And it's just incredibly measured and thoughtful. And like, you're right that no one's wrong, but like, you just cannot help but feel for, for both of, you know, for everyone. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't help that like one side is might be getting worked by the, the shadow King, but you know, <laughs> their point I don't, remains valid though. Yes. Yeah. And I don't mean this. I don't, I do not mean this like as a, as a burn. I sincerely do. You know, I, I don't know how this arc will end in the past. I've been kind of like wanting to hurry it along at this point. I fully just accepted and enjoyed that. It is just a book about debates and I want <laughs> <laughs> this arc to end with Gabby debating the Shadow King. I don't want to see any powers. I want them to talk it out because that would actually be like a nice continuation of this, uh, which I swear isn't an insult. I really enjoy that about this book. It's the most, for, uh, there's a lot of thoughtful books in this lot and this whole line, but this might be the top. This I think this is the top of all of it. It's the most like comprehensive in what it's trying to say and all the ways it's approaching uh, its many themes. I mean, I will argue that this and this is this and Way of X, uh, yeah, basically be the second. tackling the themes um, like head on and not and not even like um, doing a surface game. <laughs> they're they're mm -hmm. diving right in, yes. into it. So so I kind of like it a lot. Um, I mean, the thing is that the reasoning behind the reason the reasons given by both groups are are right in their own. I mean, mm -hmm. in in some ways, I just I I mean, it's just that the approach to it is also both not correct in some ways. That's the problem here, right? Like we both we understand where they're coming from, and we also can see how certain things are not right. I mean, why why would you want to swap into a dead body? That's one. Thing. <laughs> well, they're they're just they're messing around. They're at that point because there's no other answer that's been given exactly. to that because which you know is like, you know, from like our traditional like view of morality and you know Gabby's like that is a that feels wrong. That seems invasive and intrusive, but like, you know, they do mention this, this might be science. Now I don't feel yeah. like that's like a fully realized defense, but they are clearly in this whole other headspace because they don't have any other options. Yeah. I mean, and, Green Boy isn't wrong though. This is an experiment and it if, is. And if um, Prodigy could do experiments on that body, why can we? And, and it's, it's, you know, like the, clearly the, you know, Cosmo and all of them, they're clearly like, they're a little shaded by the shadow King here. Not, not literally, but they're clearly mm -hmm. in, in the, in the wrong slightly or in a sense, but then, you know, Gabby is, she just got this pep talk from, uh, from J Jim, <laughs> from the, uh, who she Jimmy. just talked to Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy, that's right. And James, so she's like, you know, maybe coming about this a little bit more stern and forceful than she should and be not listening to them as much because she's just been told like, well, you know what, they have faith in me. I'm going to take my approach fully. And it's, you know, there, there's, I don't, I found that interesting that like, you know, it's a, it's a sweet moment, but then it's being applied in this way that isn't really, uh, productive in a sense. Yeah. Well, I, I want to be though. I want to be careful too by like putting too much on the whole. They're teenagers; they're experimenting. If they would just be allowed to do the crucible, which many of them are willing to do, 
this would yeah. all be resolved. Like they could come back, no, not, no, with, sure. not with the moment that kind of, turn, I mean, uh, questionably, because Anil's still going to be Anil and still have Anil's yeah. power. He could go through the Crucible a hundred times. He's probably going to look like a lizard. That's just his mutant power. Whereas yeah. then you have Cosmar who's like, is it really my power? Or is it because in my first manifestation of my power, I didn't understand it and I couldn't control it. Maybe if I had a second chance to manifest my power, this wouldn't happen. So even within the group of them that are influenced by the Shadow King, they're, they're shades of if death being available to them would fix it. I'm not, I don't want to say that the take that they're teenagers, they're trying stuff is wrong. That is absolutely no, no. a component of this. But also it's kind of like for Cosmar, it would literally solve her problems. For Anil, he has no other way to solve his problems. That There's yeah. more than just teenage angst no, but, there. No, but, no, for, no, sure. but for Cosma, I think that like, you know, um, the other approach would be, would be would be the 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 older mutants going to her and say, hey, let's try this approach first. Let's try and see if you can control your powers right. and then reverse the effect on you. Whereas um Eno, like you like you pointed out, and Rainboy, like you pointed out, um there is it is their power. There's no way they can change and it. The, what you're, the yeah. other other question I like the thing I wanted to kind of bring up is that um, why do they have to go through crucible? Why not just have a separate program for them? Well, this they is the consequence. Program. This is the total consequence of having such like a warlike culture and what Way of X is talking about. Because if you prioritize all the fighters and the battlers so much, you're going to have people like this who are not getting, you know, what they yeah. want or just, you could argue, deserve. Because if you have this ability to change and you're only giving it to the freaking fighters who want to go get beat up by Mag Magneto, like it's right. not the other a fair program, society. The other program right now is have Nightcrawler like you enough to bring you on a mission where you can get shot in the face. <laughs> that's, exactly. that's the other program yeah. that's yeah. available that's right it. now. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not necessarily a lack of, because the thing is, here's the thing, like just the same way. Um, what's it? Danny? What's her name? What's her code? Moonstar name? is Karma? Danny. Mirage. Is no, Karma no, no, is Mirage. Shana. Yeah. The, the same way Mirage was helping Karma out. She also helped Prodigy out like that. The exact same way to unlock his power and then trying to see what he can do and what there's a divergent timeline and everything. She took him on the whole journey. So Mirage can actually help these kids with understanding that diverging timeline or diverging, like maybe something like that, maybe bring another mutant to help them. It's like, hey, look, even if you do this, it's not going to help you. Like, you know, for some of them, for Cosmar, maybe that, that, hey, let's bring things under control. There's yeah. There should be separate programs for these There should be different kids. programs. There should yeah. be different I, ways to yeah. help them. I mean, and as the fast to change the face back. And this book is so much different. This book does takes a different approach than Way of X, which kind of paints the Crucible as just this brutal act where you're, you're seeing like these you know, non-fighting mutants having issues with this and, and valid ones. But at the same time, you have this moment of self-actualization, like catharsis with the actual Crucible battle in the same book. It's like balancing those two things directly. And it's, it's the, really the, nuanced. And the thing is, but the thing is the way of X, the one thing that that pointed out is like, I'm not worried about the two people that's fighting. I'm worried about all these kids just constantly cheering right. on. And that's even valid here. This is, these are like, the kids. <laughs> yeah, these kids are just there and they're like howling, like, you know, cackling about like, <laughs> And then they're taking sides. Yeah. It's like the Super Bowl. At each other. Yeah. yeah it just, been and then gamified. It, in, yeah, yeah, in between that, like, you know, it's like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Like, you know, Honey Badger's yeah. trying to make her way. It just like, it's, it's, it's insanity. Yeah. It's and insanity. But stepping on people's toe and say that, well, your feet shouldn't be there. It's not like yeah. that step on it. <laughs> you know, we live, we live, a, oh, I hate to see a sense, but we do live in a society where, you know, violence, it's very easy for children. You know, I think we can all test, like us or whoever we know, like you can become very desensitized and accepting of violence, be that through television, video games, random insane videos you find on the internet. So it's not shocking that like this kind of society is, you're seeing a live murder, but if you're living in this heightened world and these, these kids might just learn to accept it very fast and treat it like a game as, as Peter well, just said. Well, and the also other, I think that there's like a societal aspect to that too. We're not all societies are the same. Like I got in an interesting Twitter discussion this week with one of the friends of the show uh, about them saying, oh, well, this kind of gun violence is just normal for cartoons. I'm like, no, it's not. New Zealand no, doesn't air cartoons not. like that on yeah. public broadcast. Nobody would show that to a 10 year old in New Zealand. No, yeah. Like that's your American version of it's okay. And that's the, that's the nature of cultural difference. And that's fine. Everybody deserves to have a different culture. But then when you, when you turn that into, well, that's how all cultures must work. That's when you start to lose the ability to be objective about your cultural practices. 
Yeah. This isn't right. a cra- this isn't a new statement, but it is wild that they decide to f- solve the resurrection problem with an idea from Apocalypse. Now that I'm thinking <laughs> about it again, like really, that's who you went no, with because there's that, a lot of kids you have to the, live with. The this way now. Apocalypse approached this is is the 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 survival of the fittest, it right? Is, yeah. yeah. So it basically, is, yes. it's like, well, you don't get a free pass simply because the pretender you took your power away. There's mm. just such like a fight for it. There's just this strain of like and barbaric sh- Darwinism yeah. fighting with like this this softer, that, sweeter that side of children. I of course, no, of course, yeah. but you're just seeing like but his ideals seeing, clashing with these kids who want to their bodies they want to be feel right in their bodies. This and it's just this happened. total yeah. yeah. This is what happened when boober mutants are not in the council. <laughs> All right, so I want to I want to yeah. tie this up in a couple mm-hmm. ways and also yeah. move us forward in a couple ways. So okay. I think something that came up in that round which is really fascinating to keep in your head is Danny's the perfect solution to this. She's a self-actualization machine. She can show you <laughs> the version of you that's in your head. In Karma's case, there's two of her. And she did it by mistake. She wasn't even, because usually it's just your greatest wish, which is like in that moment. Like, I want a Band-Aid. I want a spear. I want a sandwich. But in reality, your true greatest wish is to be yourself. And she, without even realizing it, focuses that um, with the white rabbit, uh, which turns out to be a version of Karma's brother. And so that like is a is a perfect, and now she realizes that with a lot of effort, she can actually make that happen for karma. But she could be bringing this service to each of these mutants, right? Each of these kids. And here's the other point that I don't want to lose sight of, but I don't know if we're the right crowd to take it deeply. Vita Ayla, as a writer, is non-binary and clearly is writing some metaphorical things here that can be tied to the gender dysphoria experience in actual life that a person who is trans might experience. And I'll remind folks that non-binary is under the flag or umbrella of trans in many discussions today. And at the same time, it's still a metaphor. They're mutants. We're not, none of them are to our knowledge here trans characters. So we can't apply that one-to-one in the actual world. And also, if you're not somebody who's having that experience in life, it's really hard for you to say, well, this should be this or should be that, because clearly there's a little bit of that thematic um, impact stacked here. And that's why I find that whole discussion about agency, autonomy, uniqueness between Scout and Cosmar are really interesting because they're both right. And basically the dysphoria that is being discussed here is Scout saying like, I'm a rubber stamp and I'd prefer not to be. And the other people saying, well, I'm being forced into this body and I prefer not to be. They're, it's all a great metaphor, it, but it's Vida Ela being an incredibly talented writer, making the X-Men metaphor work in much more nuanced ways than it usually does. Tyler, what are we gonna discuss to close us out here? Well, we still have to kind of discuss the fight between Danny and uh, Shan. I do as think well that's one. As the Shadow King uh, scene. Okay, so we're lying. Coward. <laughs> yeah. Debate yeah. me. So why will you debate me? Just debate me. We just, <laughs> it's just so an exchange true. of ideas. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, something I want to point out <laughs> like, Shadow King is actually in the scene of the crowds like she's yeah, he's yeah. in the sea of the crowds in like multiple panels yeah. so i'm not sure if his influence is actually affecting the crowds mm. i feel like we've had enough of just them cheering anyway that yeah that that's just true a thing on well, something is rotten in krakoa per way of x like is it onslaught is it the shadow can there's a lot of things that can be influencing of, yeah. this. some invasive yeah. exotic right like yeah <laughs> so Let's talk about the fight just for a moment. I don't think we have to get deep here. I I think it's really, there's an interesting contradiction at the beginning of it, where because Karma's brother can't fight for himself, they've decided neither of them are going to use powers, except Mm. for nobody has powers when they're in the fight. That's the whole point. You can only fight if you (laughs) lost your powers. Everybody else always got to use their powers. Apocalypse got to use their powers. So like, I I thought it was a really interesting beat for them to be like, we're both- Apocalypse's power? Stretching, he's he's stretchy, stretch on strong. Mutation. Body it, control. It just mutate and it yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we've Storm used her power to 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 put do five finger electric death punch on Callisto's heart in Marauders, right? So I just thought that that was really interesting. That like, why did the rules get changed just because her brother can't use his power in the fight? I guess because then if. Danny's powers were allowed, maybe Karma would reflexively use her powers, which no other combatant has had the chance to do, and it would lead to, like, nuclear escalation between the two of them, yeah. so they have to both agree not to. I just thought that was really interesting, but that that's my one interesting beat from the fight that I haven't brought up yet. What Everybody gets one thing to bring up in the fight. Who wants to go next? Um, uh, I'll be I'll be basic. Uh, I, I just think, um, honestly, this is some really good fight 
this is a good fight scene from Rod uh, Rice, who can yeah. be a little bit, uh, sometimes a little static, but like, you know, this is like really good fluid movement. It, it feels right. Like I'm looking, and frankly, that final page where uh, uh, Karma gets her throat cut, like that is like a real, seems like a manga or anime kind of there's thing. A but fu, a really, there's a kung fu scene. Yes, it from, really from is. From a movie. From a kung and, fu but movie. It, it's great. It's got a lot of motion and yeah. power and like just quiet to it well, and like that's good the the top panel with like danny mm. reflected on the yeah. parang, that was like oh this is like this is kind of like you know phil noto wasn't always like a great like moot like action artist or what have you but i feel like uh, he definitely improved i just feel like this no, is no, like this better. is not more this is not no, no. I'm just, I'm just getting no as a power example. law because they get tied oh, like similar. Got it, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of static, good facial yeah. emotions. But I feel like this is a really, really good fight scene, and it was, it was nice. Anything from you, Freya, on the fight? Uh, even though I cried, this is the second time I cried. When it's like, oh, you know, I'm like, this is, I, I, I'm dying, but this is the best, like, you know, the best look I can have, like before dying. The tender moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a very tender moments and everything like that. But a part of me was also a little bit like, mm, I don't know about this because we also often see it like, you know, if it's a boy and girl, there is never a platonic relationship. One of them has a attraction for another, yeah. you know. In this case, mm-hmm. Shen is, uh, she's a gay woman and then Mirage is her kind of best friend. It's like, oh, now we're going to throw in the the attraction bait in there. Like, you know, and then potentially make them, oh, she has some feelings for her. I'm like, I don't know if I'm hip with that. Yeah, I you mean, know? a lot of like, a lot of fans would would say in response that, which I don't judge in either direction, that Danny has been queer coded many, many times over, and you know, if the, that let Danny be bisexual, gay, whatever it turns out that mm-hmm. she's going to be, and play the beat because it's been coded so many times to just play it in text instead of subtext, whether or not it means that they're romantically interested in each other or they're just appreciating an attraction to each other. And I can see that. I tend to agree with you, like let people be platonic friends sometimes, but when there's so little representation on the page, sometimes you ask for things. No, and and, and and even if we're asking for things, to me, it's like, you know, if there's no fulfillment of that, then why even showing that that's just a tease that i am not hip with anymore you know but and also someone, can't you... I, I mean i i mean i kind of identify myself as a queer woman so it's like you know i'm not necessarily hip with that oh okay just tease. i'm like no either show it to the full or let people be friends no so... but the thing is like I, i'm just saying that if uh, one of you uh kill me out I'll, I'll tell you the same thing thank you all right so we end <laughs> with rain is like don't worry scout weird this, uh, everything's normal i think you have valid concerns please debate this large psychic man <laughs> down by the river down so, by the river. Down by the river. And he's <laughs> drawn. And he's and and he and, and and Shadow King Farouk is drawn like a troll under a bridge. I want to debate a Shadow King. And you're by bringing the a river. kid to the troll. God, so the, creepy. The I mean, to be honest, but after this, I kind of lost all all goodwill I had towards Rain. As of right well, now, she like you know she has she. There's some of the things that I have read about her. That it's like she's constantly like you know upset about just things. life in general, things in general. <laughs> ah. She had a kind of like a very creepy relationship with Josh um, Elixir, which uh, I mean, uh, mm. no, that was that was like a minority grooming uh, situation. That's a that, big question mark. Yeah, that's yeah. you know that's a that's a kind of minority grooming. Then she's like, okay, I'm gonna leave X Factor. I'm gonna go to X Force, and the only contribution she had in X Force was like. Uh, knocked boots with an Asgardian and got pregnant out of it. That's pretty much her whole contribution. Then she becomes upset by that. And then she lost, but the child was taken from her. Then she upset about that. And now she's again being manipulated so easily by Shadow King. It, and here's the thing. The reason it's kind of easy to like not hate the story, but hate her, in, or, like hate or like dislike her character, which is really in line with the character. Like, you know, it's one of those things like, oh, Vita Hala wrote this. I'm I'm not saying that, that they did, but I'm mostly saying that this kind of makes sense. And, you know, I'm not 
I don't, I don't like this. Well, one of I Rain's like most persistent all. character traits is she's susceptible yeah. to suggestion, Very right? She's susceptible. brought up incredibly religious. She mm-hmm. kind of goes with whatever friend will kind of like give her the most love. She, this is a Rain character trait. So right. I think it's, I mean, I hate her in the moment, but it's really <laughs> good writing for Rain. And yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say. That this yeah. is kind of very, very much so. But then at the same time, I was kind of hoping that she's growing out of it. I guess, and that, yeah, my, my friends, is where we're going to end this discussion of New Mutants number 18, because it's a long one, y'all. If you've enjoyed <laughs> us talking about this issue, thanks. And also, we do this every week. Sometimes not at this incredible depth, but as it has turned out, every single Vida Ela issue of New Mutants has required this depth. Feels like talking about a Claremont comic, and that is a high compliment to pay yeah. to a X-Men comic book in the modern day. So if you want other discussions, look elsewhere on the channel. We get together and do this because what what is the reason, Freya? Why? Why? Why do we do Tell this us. for hours a week, every week? Uh, because X-Men is better when it's read together. It certainly is. So get together with us, get together with your friends, talk about X-Men, form your own X-Men support group. And on behalf of my X-Men support group, which is comprised of Harry, Tyler, and Faria, we want to thank you for being a part of This Week in X. If you love this show, please show us the love by liking, subscribing, and doing all those YouTube things to let us know we should keep on keeping on. And until we keep on with you again, we all hope that you are well. Bye. Bye. Bye.